Today we're going to be looking at the McFarlane Monster Series 3, The Six Faces of Madness, Billy the Kid. One of the most noted killers of the American Wild West, Billy the Kid is described as both a cold blood murderer and a modern day Robin Hood. Billy was at the epicenter of the New Mexico based Cattle Wars and saw a lifetime of gunfighting and death before his own demise at age 22. He's said to have killed more than 20 men in his short life. The third series of the McFarlane Monsters action figure line focuses on the past, a historical look back at some of the human race's most notorious bloodletters and miscreants, incredibly detailed and fully accessorized. But Billy the Kid, we're going to do something a little bit different because the figure cannot stand without the support of the casket that's underneath him. So for that reason, I'm going to keep everything together and then we're going to dismantle him once we measure off how tall the figure stands. Sounds good? Sounds good. I'm going to put the figure, well, the tape measure right next to the figure. And holding it, the figure stands at 6.6 .6 inches in height. And that translates for centimeters 16.9. Like I said, the figure doesn't stand on his own. Essentially what it is, is you get this wooden casket and Billy the Kid's foot attaches to the top there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take that off. And as you can see, he literally doesn't have a leg to stand on or he doesn't have a second leg to stand on. So we're just gonna lay the figure down for a second. He comes with this really neat wooden crate casket, which as you can see, shows one rather dead individual inside just riddled with bullets i would think it's safe to assume that this gentleman is dead um, i do like the look of the crate it does have the same similar bullets all around the outer area and even has bullets on the top there as well i don't know if whether he would have died in this casket or if he was died if he died then was put into the casket and then was proceeded then to be shot again as you can see, there's bullet holes all through it. It has a nice age to it. Um, the, the actual case doesn't sit the strongest. It almost teases you that there are areas in which you would think, okay, that must attach there. And yet somehow it just doesn't. Um, there's a hole there, for example, that's gonna be for his shotgun. So as best as I can come up with, it's supposed to look like this. And as you see right there, what I did was, there's this square peg. Let's take this off again. Now it's stuck as you can see. But there's a square peg right there. I just slid it through the hole that was on the top. And then it's supposed, I guess it's supposed to look like this, where the top of the casket is slightly hinged off to the side. It still gives you accessibility to the peg hole for his foot. And if you move it enough over to the side, I think it's supposed to be like that, there's a hole then for his his shotgun or his rifle. It is one of those characters that is fiddly. I haven't even really looked at the figure yet, but I can tell you, or I haven't shown you the figure yet, but I can tell you it's fiddly just to get all his stuff lined up. But there, nonetheless, is the casket with the poor gentleman right inside there. Very dead, very much dead. And we can put that right down there. Let's then pick up Billy the Kid and we'll have a look at him. Now, he is supposedly 22. He looks a lot older than 22, but you know the way that generations are nowadays, you could see somebody that's 22 and they look like they're eight. But mean, meanwhile, I mean, here you have Billy the Kid who looks like he probably would have been in his mid thirties, even though that's not necessarily the case. He does come with two accessories. 
One interesting thing about the accessories though, he comes with a neat looking rifle, which as you can see has some bullets there on the sides and on the top there as well. And actually while we're at it, let's take the other rifle out too. Just put him down for a second. He comes with this rifle. Pending, of course, knowing the name of these rifles, but rifle looks like it's been cast in a dark plas plastic and then painted on the handle area and the handle of the actual pistol area of the, the, the handle portion of the rifle and then the brown on the top there as well. This little area is a little on the thinner plastic and it's brittle too, so be careful of that. There's one of his rifles. And then he comes with this rifle right here. I like this one a little bit more. It's got notches here on the side in which he has taken a tally of how many have fallen to his hands, or rather his rifles. And he's got the bullets on the top there. And on the side, this one's neat because he's wrapped it around. He's just taken some rags, I guess, and wrapped it around areas, I guess, where he would be holding the rifle in his hand. So nice aging and weathering has been done, just simply taking some silver paint and brushing it across the top barrels there, give you this nice wear away look. There's the peg right there that I was talking about before that's going to go in line with the casket. So then you can take the figure and when you are displaying him, this rifle is going to fit into this hand like that. And again, there's not really a whole lot holding it together other than when you're going to attach it to the casket. And then this rifle is going to sit into the holster on the back of his back, just like that. One thing I do want to mention, though, is while this figure does have a lot of accessories, there's little areas in which you're looking at it, say primarily this holster right here, should technically have a firearm, and yet it doesn't. It makes me think there is also a Six Faces of Madness accessory pack, which I hope to have a look at over the course of Spottober as well. There's probably a pistol that's supposed to go in there. I don't know why they simply just couldn't have included the pistol with Billy the Kid to start off with, because it's an awful tease to have a firearm uh, unfortunately not be supplied and yet the the actual holster is right there it, you can see it right there you know something's supposed to go inside unfortunately there's nothing included however though and another holster we can talk about is this one right up here which i guess in theory you could put this this uh, rifle into it does stick out a little bit and then all of a sudden it does make him look rather empty-handed like something else should be there and that's the problem with this particular figure. If you are displaying him with this rifle, he's going to have an empty holster. Now, that holster could very well support something else that's going to be included in the accessory pack. We're going to have a look at that in a second. Or in a later video, we're going to have a look at that. But even like this area right here, the packaging shows him clearly holding the top of his handle, the handle of the pistol. And yet, unfortunately, like I said, doesn't come included. He has all these extra weapons all adorning his his outfit here, his clothing. He's got smaller pistols. It looks like he's got a sword or a smaller stabbing, almost like a, like a knife. It looks like a cleaver, actually. But uh, it, it is, unfortunately, a little warped. It's flat here, but because they've added this extra thick handle, it can't help but stick further out. It does look a little on the bent side. He's then also got a smaller tomahawk axe there in his boots and a, and a blade on this boot. And if we spin the figure around, he's even got a side holstered blade here, which you can go ahead and take out. And I guess if you wanted to, you could probably put the blade here and then put the rifle on the side just as an alternative. It doesn't give him much support though when you are putting him on top of the casket, but there is that option then if you really wanted to. Slide that right into place again. There we go. Again, looking at his face. Face is pretty good. I guess going to the source material, it's not it's not that off. I don't think it really bears too much of a resemblance of him. And again, a lot of these, the McFarlane lineups, they're sort of inspired by. It also so happens too, when it comes to these particular characters, there's not a lot of historical photos that you can base it from. 
later into the characters such as Billy the Kid, you kind of have some images to work from, but a lot of them are usually artist renderings. So it's all interpretation as to what these characters would have looked like. As a whole though, it's not a bad looking face. It's a little on the muddy side. It does look like it has too dark of a paint. Perhaps that may be what his skin tone would have actually looked like, but it does look a little on the muddy side in my in my personal opinion. Got some feathers there on the top of his hat. Uh, the hat is not removable, so if you think you can take that off, you would be mistaken, sir. Like I said, he's got his belt, some holstered ammo across his torso area here, and a rather long, rather long, almost soft plastic trench coat. The trench coat has some nice added paint to it, gives it that look and it has like natural wear and tear to it. Even on top here, it's got a little bit more of a darker, darker coat of brown. Even like making its way down the, the back area here of the jacket, a little bit of extra paint added goes a certainly a long way. Speaking of going a long way as well, I like the fact that they've dusted the boots with what looks to be like a dusted brown, like it would have been dirt. Just sand and dirt kicked up there as he's walking across the uh, the Wild West terrain. There's the undersides of his feet. Only one peg hole. I'll show you that in a second. And as a whole, not a bad looking figure. Posability on this guy. Again, it's going to be a little on the limited side, but his head rotates. Uh, his arm rotates rather awkwardly because, well, why would you why would you bring the arm out like this? Because there's really then nothing you can do with this hand. Both hands, by the way, are very soft plastic. Very strange versus the other Six Faces of Madness figures that we've looked at that have very dense plastic. I wonder why they went the route of giving them softer plastic on these hands. Anyways, though, it doesn't really make much sense, so it's the type of hand you're probably going to want to keep it closer to his torso. This arm does have a swivel, and the hands do rotate here. Nothing on the waist, and I guess in some ways the boots do rotate, but mileage may vary. You're not really going to get a whole lot happening there. Okay, so then we go back to the crate here, the casket. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the figure's foot, see the peg hole right there? That's going to sit right on top of this peg. The problem with this, and I'll show you what I'm, what's happening here. The problem is onto his foot. It's fine to sit on his foot, but I find it doesn't go in all the way. Or a lot of times, the top of the crate seems to almost even get in the way completely. If you leave the crate lid right off, Generally, you can tuck this right over top of him and you can get that pegged into his foot. Now, if I put him down, the figure sits pretty flat-footed. He does have a, a little bit of a gap in between the foot and whatever surface you're placing him on. You can then go ahead and take his firearm. Let me just spin the figure around here to the side. And again, there's that peg right there. And you can attach it, spin this around. Attach it just like that, and you've got that. The easiest thing I find is then take the the crate, and this is the kind of the trickier part. You may even have to take the rifle off. Feed the crate up, and the hole is right there. That's going to go like this. You can see what I mean by spindly. Everything is everything has to go the right way for this figure to work. And even then, getting it over top is not the easiest because you have to make sure that that hole is still accessible. There we go. And then you can take the firearm, the rifle, I keep calling it a firearm, but you can take the rifle, plug that in, plug it in. Not much, not much space to work with. Oh, and there you go. And there you have Billy the Kid all plugged in. Everything just has a purpose and a place, but it's not the easiest, like I said, to get everything in place. Especially the firearm. The, once you get the rifle, see the rifle problem is, yeah, the peg. The peg is very thin plastic. I just broke it off. That's okay. We can just still line it up the hand. And there you have Billy the Kid. Everything for the most part lined up. Minus, of course, a broken peg. That's how the figure is supposed to look. 
Now I'm doing that behind the camera. You could probably have a little bit more success doing it in physically in hand where you're not looking at it through the viewfinder of your camera. Either way though, I gotta tell you, it's still one of the more trickier figures to kind of get everything lined up. He has certain a, a look to him. McFarlane Toys had a vision for how Billy the Kid was supposed to look. This figure has to have his leg attached like this, has to have the top of the crate angled like this, and has to have the firearm, the rifle, sitting into that peg. Generally, you can be pretty successful, but it takes a whole lot of finagling to get the figure to look just like this. You know, I've said this on countless occasions, but I think McFarlane Toys doesn't get the credit that he deserves when it comes to revolutionizing the way we look at action figures. Back in the day, McFarlane Toys was bringing out some really creative and clever ideas for what we were getting in plastic form. Today's standards, of course, NECA being the front runner, I think, when it comes to the action figure market, especially likenesses for movies and television, NECA is shooting him out of the park where McFarlane toys might still seem a little rooted in the past for their sculpt. But back in the day, McFarlane toys was it. This was a way that we were getting horror characters in plastic form. And for the most part, all of them look really good. For the most part. These figures look good as statues, and that's about all you can really do with them. Characters such as Billy the Kid are a good example of, these are figures, when you get them out of packaging, this is the, exactly the way McFarlane Toys has you to display them. They specifically make their figures designed this way. You could try to swerve away from that, move their arms, move their heads, but they don't ever look quite right. And then you get those few instances, those delightful instances, where the figures are just a pain to put together. One of the other ones that stands out in my mind is the Twisted Land of Oz Scarecrow, which I really do want to go back and have a look at. As much frustrations that I had looking at the figure, I feel like I didn't do it a true enough service, so I might actually go back and have a look at him. But Scarecrow is also a really good example of this. McFarlane Toys had a really clear idea of how you had to display the figure. Billy the, Clit, the Billy the Kid here reminds me of the same similar thing. You get him out of packaging, this is the way you have to display them. You can't have him standing on his own. He has to be pegged into the crate, and he has to have his rifle plugged into the side. Ultimately, I just broke the peg off on the rifle, which is no end of day. The figure still will go on, and I can still display him the way I've got him right now but he has a specific way of displaying him. And that could be frustrating to people that want to be able to pick up a figure and manipulate and mold them and articulate them the way that they want. McFarlane toys, you really can't do that. So it's a bit of a learning curve to get any one of these figures out of packaging. For the most part, it's pretty self-explanatory. But being that they don't also include instructions, it's really up to the wherewithal of the collector to know exactly what you're supposed to do with the figure. I think instructions could have certainly gone a long way. Billy the Kid is certainly not one of the more complex characters, but there's a lot of little fiddly things that you have to get in place to get the figure to stand just right. Today we were having a look, though, at the McFarlane Monsters Series 3 Six Faces of Madness, and this was Billy the Kid. If you guys haven't had a chance to go back and have a look at some of my other reviews of the Six Faces of Madness, there's a whole playlist designated for that. Also, more spooky spots are going to be lined up for the rest of this month of Spottober. So, even though you may be new to this channel, if you've just subscribed, hello, come on in. More videos will be coming your way. Like I said, we're going to do a whole bunch of new spooky spots lined up for the rest of Spottober. So, there's a whole lot to look forward to if you've already subscribed to this channel. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.